Hi folks and welcome to Open Analysis Live. So today we have a very requested video, one of the most requested on our Discord, which is what IDA plugins do we use and how do we install them? So today we're gonna to do five IDA plugins that we use daily for malware analysis. And we're gonna go over how we install the more difficult ones that require a little bit extra than just dropping the plugin into the IDA plugins directory. So before we get started, the most important thing about making sure your plugins work is getting your IDA Python environment set up correctly. Now, the way you set up this environment is gonna change dramatically based on the version of IDA that you're using and the version of Python that you're using. We've actually put together a guide on Patreon and we've unlocked it for everyone so you don't have to be a Patreon, which I'll link in the video description below, going through a bunch of different ways to set up your environment and a bunch of troubleshooting tips that you guys can use if you get stuck. Now, for this video today, we're gonna to be using Python 3 with IDA 7.5. And one last thing to note is if you have IDA free, you cannot run plugins with it. It doesn't allow plugins. So you must have a paid version of IDA. The IDA home version accepts plugins, no problem. So that should work for you. But IDA free, you can't install any plugins. So when it comes to setting up your Python environment for IDA, the number one tip that you need to keep in mind is to make sure that the Python environment you're running from the IDA command line is the same one that you're accessing from your shell when you're using pip to install modules that your plugins require. So the best way to do this is to go into IDA here. We go down to our command shell. We type in import sys and then sys.version to check the version of Python that's running in IDA itself. Then we open our command shell here. We type in Python dash dash version and we can see it's the same version. Now this usually indicates that you're set up with the right environment in IDA and in your shell so that whenever you install anything, in the shell, it's available inside of IDA. Now, if you get a little bit hung up and you wanna make sure 100% that you're using the right environment, you can use a tool called IDA Pi Switch, which comes installed in the IDA directory in your program files. So what you can do is you can run this tool and this will show you the exact path to the Python interpreter that IDA is using. And you can also use this to switch interpreters if you wanna to switch to a different interpreter. That's a little bit more advanced than we wanna get into in this video, but you can at least use this tool to verify that the Python path that IDA is using is the same Python path that you're using in your command shell. And this is gonna become very important when you're installing requirements, modules, stuff like that for your plugins. And again, if you get stuck or you want more details, I encourage you to go check out our blog post. Uh, it has a lot more detail about how these tools can be used and how you can double check things if you run into trouble. So with that out of the way, let's get to our first plugin that we use every day. One. You guys probably already know what it is. It's hex copy. I wrote it myself. It's like four lines of code and it replaces two clicks in the IDA command shell. So in IDA, if you want to copy some data as hex encoded string, you have to copy it. And then there's two clicks to like copy as hex encoded data for the plugin. It's just one copy. You just highlight right click then hex copy. So it saves me one click and I use it daily. And to install this, all you have to do is just grab the plugin from our GitHub and drag it over into your plugins folder in IDA. Very simple. This is as easy as it gets. And uh, this is probably a plugin that I use the most. <laughs> this brings us to plugin number two. Two. The second most used plugin, which I also wrote called HashDB, which takes advantage of our HashDB server and allows you to resolve import hashes in malware. Now we've done a whole video on this. I will link it here and also in the description of this video below. So you can go check out that video and see exactly how HashDB works. So two plugins that I use daily, which I happen to have written, <laughs> which is why I use them, that fulfill two needs that I basically, I'm always doing every time I'm looking at malware. So that brings us to our next plugin, plugin number three. Three which is struct typer. Now struct typer I use in coordination with hashdb. What it allows me to do is it allows me to apply function types to a struct that I've created in IDA. This is super helpful when I'm using a struct to represent an import address table and I want each member in the struct to be typed correctly so that then when I look at it in my pseudocode, all of the arguments line up and the code is, is legible, it's readable. Now this is part of the Flare IDA plugin and I'll talk about installing it in just a minute because my fourth most used IDA plugin Four is also from the Flare IDA plugin repository, and that is apply callee type. Now apply callee type I also use 
in coordination with HashDB. What this does is this actually applies a type directly in the IDA pseudocode. So you click on the variable that contains a pointer to the function that you're trying to type, and then you select plugins, apply Kali type, you select the correct function that you want to apply the Kali type for, and this will apply the function type to that variable in IDA. Those of you who have been catching our streams on Twitch, where we've been reverse engineering Emotet and Drydex, you will see me use both of these plugins quite a bit. The reason why I use these plugins is because once I've used HashDB to resolve import hashes, I then need to actually type the variables that contain the pointers to those imports. So it's kind of a mouthful, but if you checked out those streams, you'll see how useful these plugins are to me. And just a shout out, if you go follow us on twitch.tv slash oilabslive, all one word, oilabslive, you can join the next time we stream. Streams are free and they happen whenever we feel like sharing some of the reverse engineering that we're doing. Obviously the recordings of the streams are also available on Patreon, but for those you need to be a Patreon subscriber. So in order to get struct typer and apply Kali type as plugins at IDA, what we need to do is we need to install the Flare IDA plugin repository. Now this is a little bit more advanced than just dragging a Python file into IDA because it has some dependencies that you also need to install. Now the install process is still pretty straightforward. What we need to do here is we need to clone this GitHub repository. So we'll clone it locally. Then if you open it up, you'll see that there's both a plugins directory and a Python flare directory. What we want to do is open the plugins directory and we want to copy our struct typer and apply Kali types plugins into the IDA plugins directory. So far, so good. Now what we want to do is we want to include all of the dependencies that those plugins rely on. The way to do this is to actually copy the entire Flare folder from the Python directory into our IDA slash Python directory. So this is a special directory that sits in the IDA install and it contains dependencies that are loaded into your Python environment. So what you can do is just drag this folder into your IDA Python directory. Now when the plugins run, they'll automatically search in that directory for the Flare folder and all your dependencies will be loaded. All of this should work fine. The only inconvenient thing about this is that if there is an update to the Flare IDA code, you need to you can hear my dog in the background. You need to do a git pull and you need to copy that dependency folder into IDA again. So there's that extra manual step in order to make sure that it stays updated. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of this um, because of that extra manual step. And in the past, I have had trouble with the Flare IDA plugin folder becoming out of sync with IDA as I updated IDA versions. <laughs> So there have been troubles with this in the past. Since IDA 7.4, things have been pretty smooth though. The API is much more stable and I haven't run into any issues, but just be aware of that. That brings me to my fifth most used plugin. Five. A new plugin, which I've only been using for a week or so, but it's super helpful so far, which is the Mandiant Kappa Explorer plugin. Now this is part of the Kappa project which is a larger project that is intended to allow you to statically determine characteristics of a malicious file without having to run in a sandbox. Personally, just a personal opinion, I'm not a big fan of the static analysis tool. I find it has too many false positives to be useful. However, the IDA plugin is extremely useful. It's the opposite. I've had nothing but success with it and it's saved me enough time in the past couple of weeks that it has become a go-to for me when I'm looking at a new piece of malware. The way this works is the plugin loads a series of signatures which are updated separately. I'll get to that in a minute. And it runs those signatures on your malware file in IDA. For each one of the signatures, the signatures will match either like a crypto routine or some sort of behavioral pattern that they've determined statically. For each one of those matches, you get a list of where the matches are and the functions that the matches have been found in. You can then go and open the functions in IDA and confirm whether it's a false positive or not. This extra step of being able to confirm whether it's a false positive or not in IDA is what makes this so much more useful than the static analysis version of this, which exists outside of IDA. Now, the only drawback to this plugin so far is that the install is insanely complicated. It is the most complicated install I've ever seen for an IDA plugin. There are multiple components to it, but we'll walk you through them step by step and hopefully we can get it all set up correctly. So the first thing to do is to install the Flare Kappa module using pip. So you can do a pip install Flare Kappa. 
This will install the general framework, the Kappa framework in your environment. Again, make sure that the pip version that you're using in your shell is using the same Python version that's being used in IDA. That's the only trick here. The next thing you want to do is do a git clone of the Kappa repository, the GitHub repository here. Then go into the plugins directory and copy the plugin into your IDA plugins directory. This will set up the plugin and the plugin will use the pip installed Flare Kappa modules to operate. So far, so good. The step that can get you tripped up is that this install doesn't come with any signatures. There's no rules with it. So if you run the plugin, you're not going to get any results. What you need to do in order to get the signatures is do another git clone of a different repository, the Kappa rules GitHub repository. So you do a git clone of the Kappa rules repository, save that somewhere on your drive. I like to save all my git repositories under my user directory and slash git. That's where I keep them. Then what you want to do is when you run the Kappa Explorer plugin, you want to go to settings and you want to set the rules path to that rules repository that you just cloned. This is the most important step. Once you set that up, everything should work fine. But if you don't set it up, there's not going to be any rules for it to run against and you won't get any results from it. So this is a complex setup. There's multiple steps to it, but hopefully we've laid these out in a way that you can get it set up and running yourself. The useful part of setting it up like this is that anytime you want, you can go into the Kappa rules GitHub repository, do a git pull and pull down any new rules that might have showed up. Because the rules are updated independent from the plugin, this allows you to do those updates quickly without having to worry about messing up your environment or anything like that. So it's well thought out. It's just a little bit of a pain to get started. So with that, that's our five most used plugins in IDA for malware analysis. Obviously, you guys probably have your own plugins that you like to use. Share them in the comments below. We also have a lot of plugins that we use, just not as often. There's a few ones that come to mind, like the Indizer plugin, which we have a separate entire video covering, and Bindit, which we have a separate entire video covering. So what I'll do is I'll leave a link to the Indizer video and the Bindit video here. If you guys want to check out those plugins, they deserve their own video altogether because they're so powerful and we use them so often. So hopefully you find this useful and and hopefully you don't have any problems setting up your Python environment for IDA. If you do, remember to go check out that blog post and you can join our Discord. Link is below, free to join. And if you have any problems, you can just ask there. We'll be happy to help you guys out. Lots of people in there asking questions about installing plugins, which is why I wanted to make this video. Till next time, keep exposing mechanics behind the malware. Stay curious. Me. me again. One last thing before I go. I uh, want to shill for our Patreon. If you guys enjoy these videos, make sure you sub Patreon slash OA Labs. And also I started a Twitch channel where you can just watch me reverse engineer things. No tutorials, just live reverse engineering for a couple hours. So I'm shilling for that too. Uh, go check us out, OA Labs Live on Twitch. Yeah, you fucking feel me? Yeah, you fucking feel me? Yeah.